Okay, so in today's video, we're gonna have a look at error intervals when it comes to truncation. So by the end of the video, we should be able to answer a question like the one you can see on the screen. Now, when it comes to uh, error intervals with truncation, it obviously is very important that we're able to understand error intervals. So what I will do is I will link the video for error intervals in the description so you can have a look at that. But we are gonna be specifically looking at when it is used with truncation. So do make sure you check that video out first. Within that video at the very end, I do mention truncation, but I don't go into it in huge detail so it's going to be a relatively quick video where we just look at the truncation aspect so with that being said let's get started Okay, so looking at our first question. Now it says here, a number is truncated to one decimal place and the result is 3.4, write down the error interval. So when, it, when we're looking at truncation, that essentially means that the number has just been chopped off. For example, if I was to write down a number that could be truncated to 3.4, I could write down 3.456. And if I was to truncate that number to one decimal place, we would chop it after the first decimal and then whatever's at the end there would just disappear, we just get rid of it. So actually I can actually just completely get rid of that and there we go, we've got 3.4. Okay, but it doesn't really matter what was after the 3.4 there, but it's been truncated and now it just says 3.4. So when we're looking at writing down an error interval for this, we need to think about the lowest and the highest possible number that it could have been. And that's what we're gonna go through on this video. So let's get rid of that and have a little think. So let's think about some numbers. So would 3.41 be the lowest it could have been? Well, actually no, because it could be 3.400 and we could keep saying lots of zeros until we get any number after that. And when we're writing down an error interval, it's not gonna look any different to normal. We're still gonna have a letter in the middle for this particular one. I'm gonna put the letter X in the middle. We've got our two arrows pointing to the left, just like with normal error intervals, and the left one has our equal to symbol on it. So we're trying to find out what number goes in this position and what number goes in this position, or in other words, the highest and the lowest it could have been. So we'll start again with thinking about the lowest. Well, if it's 3.4, it could be any number after the four, okay? So any, any number at all after the four, it would be the lowest. But let's just have a quick think about what was if we went lower than 3.4? What was if it was 3.3 or 3.3? And let's make it as big as we can, close to 3.4 with lots of nines. And just let's just imagine those nines just keep on going. Well, even with this number, if we truncated that, which is just chopping it off after the first decimal, all those nines disappear. It doesn't matter that it's super close to four because they would just be gone and it would just be 3.3. So there is no number in existence that starts by th with 3.3 that would ever truncate to 3.4. And for that reason, the lowest it could possibly be is 3.4 exactly. And this is gonna be a bit of a pattern throughout this video and you're gonna see that on the next question as well. So the, actually the number that we've been given in the question when it comes to truncation is gonna be our smallest possible value. Now let's think about our largest possible value. So what's the next number up from 3.4? Well, that's gonna be 3.5. So, so again, let's just have a think. 3.5, I don't know, 0, 0, 1. One that's very close to 3.5. Well, if we truncate that, it doesn't matter how close it is or how small it is, it's never gonna to round to 3.4. That one is always gonna to round to 3.5. So again, all of these numbers after the line there would disappear, but this would be 3.5. So it would have to be something which is less than 3.5. It would have to be in the 3.4 range of numbers. And if we think about our error interval, and obviously if you've watched a previous video on error intervals, you know that this symbol on the right of our error interval there means that it has to be less than this particular number. It can't be equal to that number. And we already just said there, well, it can't be equal to 3.5. It has to be less than that. So 3.5 would have to be our largest number there that it can't be on the right of our error interval. And if a number has been truncated to one decimal place, and we get this answer here, 3.4, it has to have been between 3.4 and less than 3.5. So between 3.4 and 3.5, but not equal to 3.5. So let's have a look at another one. It's gonna be very, very similar to this. And uh, let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so just like normal error intervals, we're gonna have a quick read of this, but we're gonna write our error interval exactly the same as we always do. We'll put a letter in the middle. Let's just read this question though, because it does say X in there. So we'll keep the X in the middle. 
we'll have both our arrows pointing to the left and an equal to symbol on our left arrow there, our left inequality. So it says this one's been truncated to two decimal places. And it says the result is 2.34. Now, just like the last one, the number that we're given, when it's about truncation, that one is gonna to have to be our smallest number. It can't have been the next number down, which is 2.33. Can't have been that, otherwise it would have truncated to 2.33. So 2.34 is the smallest that it could have been. And now moving on to that next number up. Now, as this one's been rounded to two decimal places, we're specifically looking at that second decimal place. And that second decimal place couldn't have been any higher than the four. So the next number that it couldn't have been is 2.35. And again, remembering it can't be 2.35. And that is why on this right inequality here, which I'll highlight, doesn't have that equal to symbol on it. So again, if this has been truncated to two decimal places, it has to have been between 2.34 and 2.35, but it can't be 2.35. Okay, so there we go. That's how we deal with truncation. Again, as I said, if parts of this are a little bit too quick, such as the way that we write the inequalities, the way that we actually write the error interval, then please do go into the description and watch the video on error intervals first, because that's gonna go into a little bit more depth about those inequalities. And this is almost like a part two to that video, a bit of an extension onto one of the questions within that. So there's a couple of questions for you to have a go at. Let's have a look at those now. Okay, so there's four questions here. There's two on the left that have been rounded to, or tr truncated, sorry, to one decimal place. And there's two on the right that have been truncated to two decimal places. So what I want you to do is to have a go at writing out the error intervals for all of these four numbers. Hopefully that won't take you too long. Pause the video there and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one. So for our error interval, and I'm gonna use X for all of these. So we've got X in the middle, arrow to the left, equal to on that left one. So this first one would be 2.9, and the next part there would actually be 3.0, the next number up. It has to be within that 2.9 range. Again, for that particular question there, you don't necessarily have to put 3.0, you could just put three, but you wouldn't be wrong to write 3.0. For the next one, 8.7 is the smallest it could have been. And again, writing out our inequalities there, and it can't be 8.8. .8. There we go. Onto our two decimal place ones. We have 9.32, so 9.32 will be our smallest between, with our error interval there, and it can't have been 9.33. And onto our very last question here, 6.58 is our number there, and that is gonna be between 6.58 and 6.59. So there we go, there are our four answers for this particular little set of questions. Right, okay, well done if you've actually got that and understood that. We've only got maybe one more question or two more questions for you to have a look at. So let's just have a look at a different way of phrasing this type of question. Okay, so this question doesn't actually have the word truncated in there. And if we have a look at this, it says James completes a maths question on his calculator. He writes down the first three digits on his calculator screen, and the answer that he writes down is 24.8. Write down the error interval for his answer. So obviously it doesn't mention anything about rounding. It doesn't say he's rounded it to 24.8. So therefore we know it's not about bounds. It's not about rounding with error intervals. This is about truncating, because all he's actually done is written down the first three digits. And remembering that the fourth digit there could have been a nine, in which case it would have rounded to 24.9. Okay, but obviously he just says it just says here he wrote down the first three digits. So this is about truncation. We'll spot that in the language. This is why this sort of question is worth writing down here for your notes. So that's the number we're dealing with. I'm not going to treat it any differently. I'm just going to put 24.8, which is the smallest it could have been. And then the next number above that will be 24.9, following that pattern from the previous ones. It has to be somewhere between 24.8 and 24.9. And there we go. That's how you obviously can spot in a question that it's actually talking about truncation, not about rounding. So I've got one question here for you to have a go at on this. Okay, so I've got one more question after this one just for you to have a go at. No more explaining from me, but here's a question for you to have a go at. So pause the video there, have a go at this one, go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so Alicia completes a calculation. On a calculator, she writes down the first three digits. On the screen, she writes down 32.6, write down the error interval. So the smallest number is the one we're given, 32.6, and that is between 32.6 and 32.7. There we go, well done if you're getting that, there's your answer. 
So I've got one more question with slightly different words, pretty much the same as this one. That's gonna be our final question before we wrap up this video. So let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so on to your final question, the one that we had right at the start of the video. So pause the video, have a go at this question, see if you can get the answer. If you can, fantastic, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so Jack used his calculator to work out the value of a number y. So this time it obviously just says y in there. The answer on his calculator display begins, or began, 6.3. Write down the error interval for y. So again, very similar to the last one, the answer on his calculator display began 6.3. doesn't say anything about the number afterwards. So this has been truncated. Well, all we know is that there's 6.3 there. So we're going to write down what the error interval could be. Or in other words, that decimal afterwards, what does it have to be between? This 6.3 has to be between two numbers. So exactly the same as all the rest. Now this time the question does have a Y in there. So for this particular question, I would put a Y in the center of my error interval, although thinking about an, on an exam, you wouldn't actually lose marks if you accidentally for, forgot and put a different letter in there because you've been used to putting an X in. But just make sure you read the question, make sure we put that correct letter that it's talking about. So again, 6.3 is going to be on the left, and the next number up from that, well it can't be 6.4. And there we go, and that's our error interval complete. And that's the end of the video. So I hope you found that useful. That was looking at error intervals when it comes to truncation. Again, if you haven't already, do make sure you check out the video on error intervals when it comes to rounding. And again, I do mention a little bit about truncation at the end of that video. So there you go. Hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully it was helpful. Don't forget to share the video. Don't forget to like the video. And I'll see you on the next one.